Report, our top story. Voters in the Democratic Republic of Congo are still waiting for results from presidential and legislative elections after an unscheduled day-long ballot extension that prompted some opposition candidates to cry foul and call for a rerun. The vote will determine whether President Felix Teshikedi serves a second term. I first asked Abdu Shakur Aboud from VOA Swahili Service, who is closely monitoring election results in Kinshasa, if situations have been rectified and if results would be announced today. It is going to be announced. Uh, I just talked with the spokesperson of CENI, the Electoral Commission, and uh, she told me that they're going to start around 5 o'clock p.m. local time. That would be around 11 a.m. in Washington. She said they're going to start uh, announcing the results from the diaspora because for the first time, DRC diaspora were able to vote in certain cities. So the results from there will be announced first, and then they will continue announcing by tendency of each polling stations. Everybody's a little bit confused when they say they're going to announce it by tendency, which means that in a polling station, they will say who is the tendency of winning, who is the tendency at polling B of winning. So they're not going to give numbers the way we understood, but we have to see at five o'clock what's going to come out. And Shakur, uh, disputed elections have often sparked unrest uh, in Africa's second largest country. And this voting uh, for some uh, was extended into Thursday, prompting five opposition presidential candidates to call for a new election, saying the extension was unconstitutional. Yes, the thing is that uh, it's true the five candidates uh, led by Martin Fayulu, who was beaten by Chisekedi in 2018, have called for no elections and they want a new election. But the tensions are very high in the country. When you look at the social media, there's also a lot of tension between each side, each side saying that they are winning, the opposition declaring they are winning, Chisekedi side declaring they are winning. There's been some violence in Kasai. People who have been known voting for Katumbi have been beaten by Chisekedi's followers. And so people are worried if the results doesn't go their way, what will happen? And I talked with a political analyst shortly, and he also is expressing fear there might be chaos in the country. The National Election Commission, SENI, has denied this, but... Both opposition and independent observers have said the voting unfolded in a way that could affect the credibility of the results. Yes, that's what they did. They said it's going to affect the results, but uh, Seni has said the irregularities will not make any changes to the results. So that's where also there is a conflict between the people, and that's where everybody is feeling that the Chisekedi government worked with Seni to create a situation which is chaotic and make sure that they, he remains in power. That's what people are saying and what experts are saying here in Kinshasa. And the observer mission from uh, the Congo's powerful Catholic Church has deployed more than 25,000 observers to do its own compilation of election results. Any word from the uh, powerful Catholic Church? We are waiting for that. Uh, yes, uh, the Catholic Church is very strong here. It's uh, respected and uh, they will be announcing their own outcome. We are waiting to see because what is interesting here is that by yesterday evening, every polling station which had already counted the votes had the results on the wall. So you can just walk at a polling station and you can see who won in that polling station. So with those observers, they can calculate and tabulate around the country and they can give the results according to what has been calculated in each polling station. And Shakur, the elections on Wednesday were derailed by delays in delivering election kits and malfunctioning equipment, and people were struggling to find their names on registers. There was not enough preparation. Why did this happen in the first place? That's what everybody is wondering, because they spent almost $800 million to prepare these elections. And people are wondering why such amount of money could not prepare the right election. But as I said before, the Electoral Commission was named only two years ago. So it had very, very little time to prepare itself. So yes, everybody is talking about 
lack of preparation. And number two, they ordered materials which at first was not compatible. They had to change, so it delayed and delayed. And number three, they had issues of logistics. They had to wait for help. United Nations came in. The planes which were supposed to carry the equipment came from Egypt, but they came a little bit late, like 24 hours before the election. So all that combined created a recipe of chaos. That was Abdu Shakur Aboud from VOA Swahili Service. He talked to me from Kinshasa. Tusaid Farini has been living in Malawi Zariga refugee camp for 10 years after freeing and resting his home country the Democratic Republic of Congo. Because I was working as a human rights defender. And, uh, you know, like uh, in a country called the Democratic Republic of Congo, uh, you can just see democracy is only through the name, but it's not in reality. So, yeah, that's why we decided to leave the country. The Zareka refugee camp, originally built to hold 12,000 people, is home to over 50,000 refugees and asylum seekers, mostly from the DRC, Burundi and Rwanda. An estimated 8,000 have settled in the country's rural and urban areas and most are well integrated into communities, the UN says. In March, Malawi ordered them to return to the camp and in May, authorities forcibly relocated about 900 of these refugees to Zalega and exercised human rights bodies say was a violation of their rights. Refugees say they were beaten and their children were exposed to harsh conditions, including imprisonment, during the forced relocation. Now, refugees and advocacy groups such as FGK Umuza Foundation and others sent a letter in October seeking recourse at the International Criminal Court, or ICC. Machuna Piri is the liaison officer for Inua Advocacy. At uh, 5th September of this year, we had submitted uh, 36 cases to the ICC, and these cases included issues of uh, gang rape, issues of uh, uh, extortion and bribery by um, uh, suspected police officers. The ICC has yet to respond to the October letter by the refugees and their representatives. In the meantime, the Malawi Human Rights Commission has asked law enforcement agencies to investigate the allegations says Peter G.C., the Commission's Director of Civil and Political Rights. Law enforcement uh, agencies have been accused of stealing uh, money as well as property from the refugees. There have also been allegations uh, of uh, violations of children's rights, especially, for instance, where children uh, were detained with adults in prison. Uh, there are also some allegations that in, uh, some women have been uh, sexually abused and so on and so forth. Chisi said these abuses happened in May during the forced relocations. But Malawi Minister of Information Moses Kunkuyu says that the government imposed the relocation according to the law and is committed to protecting the rights of refugees and asylum seekers. The process was communicated that we want to make sure that in line with international protocols, those that are called refugees, they must really be accorded the status of refugee. The African Commission on Human and People's Rights says Malawi has regressed in the protection of refugee rights since the government issued a similar 2021 directive for refugees residing outside Zaleka camp. Chimwewe Barata, VOA News. A Belgian court on Friday sentenced a Rwandan former militia leader to life in jail for dozens of murders and rapes committed during the 1994 genocide. Salafin Twahirwa, 66 years old, was found guilty of directly participating in or overseeing the atrocities by Hutu Italahame militiamen in Kigali during the slaughter of Tusi and moderate Hutus 30 years ago. A second defendant, Pieli Basabose, a one-time close associate of former President Juvenal Habiali Marner, was also found guilty of genocide and war crimes for funding the militia. But the 76-year-old who suffers from incurable senile dementia and was unable to attend hearings was spared jail for health reasons. The trial of the two men who were arrested in 2020 in Belgium were where 
they were living in exile, whilst the sick held in the country over the 1994 Rwandan genocide. Belgium ruled what is now modern-day Rwanda during the colonial period and has a sizable Rwandan diaspora. An estimated 800,000 Tutsis and moderate Hutus were murdered during the 100 days of mass killings sparked by the shooting down of Javier Imana's plane on April 6, 1994. The sentencing in Belgium came after a court in neighboring France on Wednesday jailed former di doctor Sothen Munyemana for 24 years for his involvement in the genocide. Both Twahira and the Basabose contested the accusations during their two-month trial. Lawyers for both men said they would appeal. The guilt verdict was welcomed by Michelle Hitch, a lawyer who represented relatives of victims at the trial. The judges considered that the mass rapes perpetrated by Twahira were part of the genocide. But the defense lawyer, Vincent Larkin, said the trial had raised serious issues over the judicial cooperation between Belgium and the authoritarian regime of President Paul Kagame in Rwanda. He said that Belgian investigators had relied on a re-examining witnesses from a procedure opened in Kigali by Rwandan authorities in the early 2000s.